Okay, so here I am with an update on the exquisite queen bed. Remember when I was building the, uh, the platform bed, I said I don't know about a headboard. Well, cleaning out one of our storage units, I found a headboard and a foot for a double bed. Well, I don't really want this for the double bed, but I got the idea, what if I remodel this, make it wider, and right now it does not have this, what I need here to attach it, but what if I change that and uh, put a flange on here that can attach to my so the first thing I had to determine was the height of my angle iron that I would weld on as a transition from my 2x12 sideboard. So the top was 16 and a half inches and it started at 5 and a half inches. So I marked the old bed frame at 5 and a half and at 16 and a half, which is where my flange needed to go. After that, let the process begin. I used a grinder to cut the flange off and then took a couple pieces of angle iron over to our iron worker, which once I put the right bit into it, I was able to quickly punch out the three holes that will be used with carriage bolts to fasten to my 2x12 side of my bed. I had to make some three-quarter inch spacers, so I had some scrap steel here that I used to make some spacers so that my angle iron was going to be solidly welded to the frame of my bed. Painting over multiple paint layers that were put on over more than a hundred years was not a good idea, so I used my grinder to peel off some of that paint where I was going to weld before I would put my spacers on. And let the welding begin. Now, I'm not an expert welder. I'm not a certified welder. I'm an amateur welder at best. But a couple things you always want to have is a good leather glove for welding. And make sure that, of course, you use the eye protection. But pretty soon, I had these spacer wel spacers welded in. And I was able to get ready for welding the angle iron that I was going to weld on top of each side.
Although I'm not a exceptional welder, you can see that I was getting a good red glow on the opposite side of my angle iron. But thus, you can see that I was really melting both my spacer and my angle iron, and it should never break apart. Welding, best thing to do is to practice, try to keep a good bead going, and here I, I had a lot of fun. And of course, it's easier to do horizontally than to do up and down or even upside down. That might be a bit beyond me. With the angle irons welded in, I was able to measure the width of this bed and determine on the special build that I had done just how wide, how much wider I was going to have to make that. So I began to cut this apart as well as cut apart the foot of the bed which I was going to use to fill in in the width of the headboard that I was going to make. So I cut the pieces apart and I ground the ends down to make sure I had the right width uh, or the right length so I could make the bed the correct width. And after getting them ready, I did the scary part which was actually cutting apart the headboard to try to make sure I could make it just exactly the right width. So I got it apart and I began to measure about putting it back together and how was I going to put these extra things together. After surveying the situation, I got my grinder out and I began to cut apart what I thought was going to be the correct way to make this wider and have it look decent. I, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out, but it was uh, quite a bit of uh, fussing around with this.
Finally, getting the sections cut, the frame widened, I was able to weld in the extensions that I made from the footboard into our new wide headboard. Now, for every beginning welder or not professional, grinding is the key. So, began the long process of grinding where I had excess weld. And if you stay at it, you can grind it down and make it pretty nice. One thing that I found a better take off all those multiple layers of paint that accumulated in the last hundred years or so. So this video is pretty short on the grinding of the wheel. I went through several heavy duty grinding wire brush wheels and this video is pretty short but believe me uh, this was kind of a pain to work to get all of that paint off so I could prime it. So I won't bore you with a lot of this but it really took quite a while. Mm, but after I got it all wire brushed off, I wiped it down and decided to give it a coat of primer so that I could check just to see how it looked and if I needed to do something extra to cover up my imperfections in my weld. So I just screwed a 2x12 onto the one base, made sure it would tip back a little bit, and I hauled it outside and got ready for the gray primer. I did get a video of the primer, but you can see here the body putty to, that I found out I needed to put in to smooth uh, up my welds a little bit. And after smoothing that up, I got some uh, white paint and I took it, to, took it inside because it was pretty windy that day and I began to uh, well, do the done. paint there. So, uh, painting. I just used a couple cans of uh, aerosol paint with a really handy little uh, handle because I don't like putting my finger on all of that. And I think it's uh, turning out pretty good. So this is uh, what um, I have and let me know what you think. Also, don't forget to hit like and subscribe and we'll see how this looks in 
Florida when I go to set up our new Airbnb.